Star Wars 7x7 episode 2808. So there was no new news about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. We talked in previous episodes about how Entertainment Weekly likes to parcel out elements of their cover stories over the course of a few days, and they didn't drop anything on Friday. So instead today, we're going to talk about a couple of things that we didn't get to on yesterday's episode of the show, which have to do with the production and a little bit more. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy, and thank you so much for joining me for it. So the story of how the Obi-Wan Kenobi series came to be has been largely rumored and speculated and there's never really been any official confirmation on any of the elements of the details of the story. And whereas I don't think it's necessarily stated outright in the Entertainment Weekly story that dropped, I think that... You know, the publication of it, (laughs) along with all the official quotes about the timeline coming from Kathleen Kennedy, I think we're about as close to hearing an official story behind the scenes of how the Obi-Wan series developed as a result. So previously it had been reported, rumored, leaked, something to that effect, whatever the word is that would be appropriate, but never confirmed, that Stephen Daldry was attached to direct an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie. So there was going to be a standalone Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, and it was unfortunately affected by the whole Solo A Star Wars story situation and the decision to put Star Wars movies on hold for a while, or at least the standalones for a while. And then when things turned to streaming, that sort of rebooted the conversation. So this is from Kathleen Kennedy from the article. She says, you know, that was what shifted our strategy. We started to look at the opportunity in the streaming space where we could do long form storytelling. And we realized there was an opportunity to experiment in that space without the level of scrutiny that happens when you release a feature. And personally, I would like to know what she (laughs) means by scrutiny in that quote, because of course, everything that Lucasfilm does is going to get scrutinized. So there's, you know, definitely a different meaning from that quote that isn't necessarily apparent upon multiple readings, at least from my perspective, if you have an idea of what she might mean, because I would love to hear about it. And the reason why I say that I'm sure she knows what she's talking about in terms of scrutiny is there, you know, is further along in the article a quote from her where they talk about the decision of bringing Darth Vader into the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And the quote here from her is the debate around whether we should do that or not carried on for quite some some time. Everybody within our creative team has strong opinions and all of our fans have strong opinions. So when you realize that you're under (laughs) that level of scrutiny, there's the word again, certainly a story point like that is going to be scrutinized at a very high level. We talked about it constantly. So yeah, I'm definitely (laughs) curious to know what she means by the long form television stuff not having the same level of scrutiny as with a feature. I don't know, maybe that's something to meditate on too. But if you've got thoughts about it, I'd love to hear them. All right, so back to the development side of things. So there's a line in here about Hossein Amini, who, as far as we knew, was the writer of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, the initial writer. And it says in a parenthetical that he'd been hired when Kenobi was headed to the big screen. So that certainly (laughs) seems like he was the attached screenwriter for the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, and that they kept him on to convert his screenplay into scripts for a series. And they were aiming for a summer of 2020 production date, but obviously the pandemic would get in the way with that. And yet Kathleen Kennedy, according to the story, was getting concerned with the direction of the scripts. And it says that we're looking ultimately to make a hopeful, uplifting story. And it's tricky when you're starting with a character in the state that Obi-Wan would be in coming off Revenge of the Sith. That's a pretty bleak period of time. You can't just wave the magic wand with any writer and arrive at a story that necessarily reflects what you want to feel. So according to the story, production, pre-production it would have been at that time, was shut down briefly in January of 2020. The original filming date was supposed to be August of 2020. That was pushed out to January of 2021 at the time. And again, pandemic timelines are a little bit different, obviously, so that affected things as well. And so they brought in Joby Harold as the new writer, and the story doesn't say exactly how that happened or you know how his involvement came about necessarily, but 
he does say there is a quote from him where he says, this was a character that's always been a minor obsession of mine. And when I heard it was a character they were exploring, I very aggressively told them all the things I thought they should do, unquote. And whether that's something that goes all the way back to the Stephen Daldry days and the pitches that they were having, or whether it was, you know, hearing that they had shut down production temporarily and were looking for somebody new and that's him throwing his hand in the ring, that isn't necessarily made clear in the article. And the rest, as they say, is history. They got it off the ground, they got it filming, they finished filming in September of this year, and now they're on track for a May 25th release. So the other thing that I wanted to mention that you know, I've been thinking about in terms of what we've seen in the trailer now, and knowing that the Inquisitorious is on Tatooine, like it's just, it's such, an unusual choice and you when you think about the danger of Darksiders being on Tatooine and potentially alerting Darth Vader that hey there's some kind of Jedi presence on Tatooine that seems like a really dangerous situation for Luke and so how do you also then create the you know the canon connections so that you know Darth Vader remains completely unaware and unsuspecting of the possibility that Luke could have been hidden in what seems like the most obvious place on Tatooine. And I don't know what kind of reports the Inquisitors are required to file as part of their paperwork, but Reva facing down some random farmer named Owen Lars, you think that would ping in a database somewhere. So now I'm starting to wonder whether there's actually a second Jedi hanging out on Tatooine that another person just by sheer coincidence decided that Tatooine would be a great place to hide from the Empire and that once this person is dealt with that kind of erases the question of there being any issue on Tatooine and so Darth Vader doesn't even have to give it any more thought than that. At least that's the fun theory I'm playing with right now but I'd love to hear yours as well. So on YouTube chime in, in the comments for this episode and as for listeners for audio listeners um, please check out the blog post for this show's episode at sw7x7.com and drop a comment on there. I would love to hear what you're thinking about this whole situation on Tatooine and how Darth Vader is not going to realize that there was a Jedi there or that Obi-Wan was there or that Luke was there or Owen was there or even connect any of those dots. And so there you go. That's what I've got for you for today's episode of the show. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. By seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.